guys welcome back to my channel my name is Benanin and for today's video we're going to be doing a yearly sunscreen ranking I try to do one of these videos at least once a year where I rank all of the sunscreens that I've tried within that year and give you a little bit of information on how I would compare them to each other this is not going to be a in-depth review of each of these I'm just gonna briefly cover what I like and don't like. If you want more details, I do have in-depth reviews of all of the sunscreens mentioned today that I will be linking down below. So definitely go check those out. If you hear one in here and you're like, ooh, that sounds interesting, tell me more. There's a full video for that. I know I'm posting this video kind of late in the summer. It is the end of August right now. We are moving into fall probably in the next couple weeks here in the Midwest. So I'm a little bit late, but let this be your gentle reminder that you should be wearing sunscreen all year round, especially if you're someone who is like me that struggles with acne and post acne hyperpigmentation and you're trying to clear some of your dark spots. You should definitely use sunscreen as like your first line of defense. If you're using any sort of tretinoin, retinol, anything that makes your skin even more sensitive throughout the year, you should for sure be wearing sunscreen regardless of if it's like super hot and humid out or if it's cold and snowing. All right, let's jump right into it. I have categorized it a little bit different this year. The last few years I've been doing sort of like three to four groups and naming them. Um, I think last year it was like put it on my face, mid, trash, that kind of thing. I think I want to be a little bit more professional <laughs> this year. So we are doing stars. One star would be things that are act absolutely garbage in my opinion. I don't like it. I didn't enjoy it. I will not recommend it to people. Two would be products that I personally did not enjoy and would not reuse, but I may donate it to someone i may recommend it to a friend or two that have different skin types than me and i feel like they would like it three these are products that i didn't love them but i didn't necessarily hate them like it like it was just an okay sunscreen it was nothing terrible nothing great just all right fours are sunscreens that i liked i enjoyed it i wouldn't say it's like my holy grail but i thoroughly enjoyed using it I would recommend it to people. I continue to use it after the review, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, amazing. And I wanna repurchase it over and over and over. You know, it's just like, it's a good sunscreen, like a solid sunscreen, but I wasn't in love. And then five stars, obviously, these are the sunscreens that I was like, wow, I love it. I would use it again. I would repurchase it. I would recommend it. I don't have a whole lot of bad things to say. I highly doubt there'll be many sunscreens in this category because I am very picky, but <laughs> that's the category categorization that we're doing today. So the first one is the Neutrogena Invisible Daily Defense Face Serum. This is an SPF 60 plus. It is a chemical sunscreen and I bought it for $13.12 at, I think it was at Ulta. It is a fragrance-free sunscreen. The active ingredients are avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene. So a chemical sunscreen. I had to give this one two stars because it's not complete garbage, but I didn't like it and won't go back to using it. The reasons that I didn't like it is because it caused me to have some sensitivities. Like my face wasn't itching, but it was irritated and it was a bit greasy. So when I wore it with makeup, I had to really powder it down. It was a little bit slick in my opinion, but I can see if somebody has really dry skin and they like to be glowy and be super, super moisturized, they don't mind a little bit of greasiness, they might like it. But for my oily, sensitive skin, I didn't really like it that much. So it's gonna go into the two star category. Not complete garbage, but not my favorite. Did not repurchase. The next two are from CeraVe. They are the CeraVe Ultra Light Moisturizing Lotion and then the CeraVe AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. I tried both of them in one video. CeraVe AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion is an SPF 30. It has three essential ceramides, niacinamide, and hyaluronic acid. I don't know what category I'm gonna put this one in. Actually, I do know. I'm gonna put it in trash. <laughs> <laughs> because this one did pill up on my skin. When I wore it on bare skin, it pilled. When I wore it on moisturized skin, it pilled. And the pilling wasn't like just a little bit of white specks. It was like balls of it clumping up. 
I don't know if I bought just a bad one, but other people were commenting that they also experienced pilling with it, so I don't know. But that was the biggest reason why I didn't like this one and wouldn't recommend it. The pilling was really out of control. Also, because it's a hybrid, there was a slight cast. It wasn't like extreme, but it was there. So I wouldn't recommend it for people with like a deeper complexion to try it. It's gonna go in trash. I have yet to recommend it and I actually threw it away because why would I wanna give that to someone to put on their face when they're gonna look a hot mess? So that one went right into the garbage. It is a one star. And then I also tried the CeraVe Ultra Light Moisturizing Lotion. The active ingredients in that one was avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene, so chemical sunscreen. It also had those three ceramides and hyaluronic acid. This one didn't have the niacinamide like the AM one did. It wasn't greasy on my skin. When I wore it on bare skin, I really liked the way that it felt. And I wore this one pretty much throughout like the end of winter. It does get slightly a little bit shiny by the end of the day, but I have oily skin, so that's normal for me. But in the initial parts when I was wearing it and throughout the day, I didn't have any sensitivities. So where would I put the CeraVe Ultra Light Moisturizer? I think I wanna give it four stars because when I originally reviewed it, I was like, yeah, I think this will work all year round, winter, summer, but after using it a little bit this summer when it was actually pretty warm out, um, I don't think it wears well in the summer, in my opinion. And then the next one is the Tatcha V Silk Sunscreen. I feel like this was a big, exciting launch for people. They were really excited to try the sunscreen. And for me, it was very disappointing. It did not live up to the hype at all. So the Tatcha the, the Silk Sunscreen is a hydrating mineral sunscreen. The active ingredient is zinc oxide 10%. This one was so expensive. It was retailing for $60 at the time. I don't think any sunscreens should ever, ever, ever cost that much because that's, that's ridiculous. If you're someone who actually reapplies their sunscreen, you'll be spending a lot of money throughout the year repurchasing but you know if you're if that's what you like if you like to spend your money on products and you're okay with that then okay but for me sixty dollars was a stretch for a sunscreen that i didn't even think was good lots of reasons why i didn't like this one number one was the packaging the packaging was just terrible the it had like a film on the outside of it that was just kind of peeling off and getting on your hands and then it would transfer from your hands to your face so that was really annoying. I feel like if you're gonna spend $60 on a sunscreen, you better have some really nice, luxurious packaging. And it wasn't that. Um, but besides the packaging, the sunscreen itself did have a little bit of a cast. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't for all skin tones. Definitely not. It did wear really nicely with makeup. And I think that's how they should have marketed this <laughs> as just like a primer or something to wear underneath makeup because it looked really good, but on its own, I wasn't I wasn't like super impressed. I was just expecting more for $60. I'm gonna give this one two stars because the actual product was okay. It wasn't one of my favorites personally, and I think if you have a lighter complexion, you would like it more. The next one that I had tried was the Kinlo Golden Ray Sunscreen. At the time, I picked up the deepest shade for melanin rich skin. And I was excited because I was like, ooh, this looks pretty good on the bottle. Like the shade on the bottle looked like a perfect match. But then when I opened the bottle and put it on my hand, it was not a perfect match. This one is an SPF 50 plus water resistant tinted mineral sunscreen. This one, I feel like you just have to be the perfect match for it or it's a no go. Also, they were claiming that it's, it was mattifying. It wasn't mattifying. It was a shiny, glowy sunscreen. So just say that. <laughs> I feel like your claims should match the product. That's like the simplest thing in my opinion because not everybody can keep buying products to try them out. They read what it says and they expect it to be that, right? Yeah, we're gonna give it two stars because the product didn't match the finish. It was like a really big difference where they said it was a matte sunscreen but it felt really shiny and greasy to me. Um, they said that it was for deeper skin tones. I am a deeper skin tone person and I feel like it didn't match me very well. So I'm gonna give it two stars because I think if your skin matches it, you would like it. And I think if you're dry, you would like it. 
Okay, and then I tried two sunscreens from the brand Tokobo. This is an Asian sunscreen. So the first one was the Tokobo Bio Water Sun Cream. This was an SPF 50 plus with a PA of four plus. I'm gonna put this one in three stars because I did enjoy the way that it felt on my skin. I liked the finish. It was just like a natural, maybe slight glow, and it didn't make me greasier. So I wasn't shiny by the end of the day. It really held up for the time that I was wearing it, which was amazing. Um, it felt super, super lightweight on. It spread out really easily. I didn't have to do too much rubbing or pulling. I could just slap it on and it dries quickly and I go. My biggest con for this one is that it smells like roses. I'm not a huge fan of fragrance in skincare, but sometimes I'm like, it's okay. Like I can deal with that. But when the fragrance is like roses and it's a strong smell, that's really a no for me. <laughs> we can deal with a little bit of a light fragrance, but a very strong rose smelling sunscreen where the fragrance stayed throughout the entire day was not for me. But if you don't mind a fragrance, I really, really, really like the finish and the feel. And then I tried their sun stick. So it's the cotton, the Tacobo cotton soft sun stick. And I didn't like this one. This one immediately is gonna go into the garbage in the one star category. Sort of a hybrid. It has the titanium dioxide, but then it also has some chemical filters in there. Overall, there was a slight cast. It wasn't a huge cast, but it was slight. The cast did sort of dissipate throughout the day, but then it would come back again when I reapplied. It did irritate my skin. It did make me feel itchy. It did clog my pores a little bit. I'm gonna keep it at one star because I have yet to recommend it to anybody. And I honestly don't think that I will because just because I didn't have a very good experience with how it felt physically on my face. The next one is the Summer Friday Shade Drop Mineral Milk Sunscreen. This is a mineral sunscreen that I bought. It was $36, I think at Sephora. And zinc oxide is the active ingredient in here. So this sunscreen, I don't really know where I'm gonna put it. I, I actually like the finish of it with a moisturizer. I remember though, when I wore it with no moisturizer underneath, just on bare skin, it did feel really drying, like it was sucking all the moisture out of my face, especially in my mouth area. But when I added a moisturizer and I put it on in small layers instead of all at once, it looked pretty good. Now that being said, I don't like when I have to do that because I, again, I don't have the time. Let's keep it simple. I don't want to have to put on small layers and take my time with the sunscreen. I want to just slap it on my face. And you can't do that for this one because the product starts to dry down really quickly, so you're not able to spread it out as nicely. There also was a slight cast. The cast was a little bit better when you put it down in layers versus all at once, and it did wear really nicely with makeup. So I think I'm gonna give this one three stars. I ended up giving this one away to a friend who has more dry skin to try out um, and more like a lighter complexion than me. So I guess I would recommend it to people as long as you're making sure that you're wearing a moisturizer underneath to really help with the drying effect. And if you are a deeper complexion, you're gonna have to wear makeup on it or wear it in smaller layers. So now let's talk about some sunscreens I actually like, finally. I tried the Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Gel and I love this sunscreen. It is going in four stars, not five. This is a Asian sunscreen. I got it for $15.99. It is kind of a hybrid sunscreen. It has a Tinosorb S, Uvenol A+, Octinoxate and the Uvenol T150. This one was water resistant, which I think is hard harder to find with Asian sunscreens for some reason. It's just like a really lightweight, easy to spread sunscreen gel. And I loved the formulation. I love the way that it felt on my skin. I found that it was hydrating and moisturizing without feeling greasy. It does give you a slight glow, but it wasn't greasy and it didn't get greasy throughout the day for me. But this is one that I would repurchase and I feel like I could use it all year round. I was able to use it here in the summer and I didn't feel like it was too heavy or greasy or too much on my face. And I've also worn it in the winter where I just add a bit of a moisturizer and then put this on top. So all year round and it didn't irritate my skin, didn't cause me any acne. You know what, actually, <laughs> now that I'm saying all this, 
maybe we should give it five stars. Let's give it five stars, actually, because I'm trying to think of if I have anything bad to say, and I really, really don't, so. I also tried the Beauty of Joe's Sun Relief Sunscreen with rice and probiotics. It's a Korean sunscreen that y'all really hyped up. If you go anywhere on the internet and you type up Korean sunscreen, I guarantee you this was gonna be one of the top ones that comes up. This one is kind of that hybrid, again, slash leaning chemical, Uvenol A+, Uvenol T150, Tinosorb M, and the Uvsorb HEB. This one does have niacinamide in it. The finish of it definitely gave a natural glow. Reasons why I didn't like this one is that it does kind of collect in your eyes, like in your creases, so it looks a little bit white. And there was a slight blue sheen to it, like in window and natural lighting, but then when you're indoors, it looked fine. So if I'm being 100% honest, I have not gone back to using that sunscreen. So to me, that tells me that it's not like, wow, not one of my staples, so I wouldn't give it four or five stars. But it is one that I have recommended to people in the past, so I want to give it three stars, but I just, I wasn't wowed by it, you know? Let's just give it three stars. <laughs> I don't know. It's okay. If you have oily skin, I don't know if you'd really like this one just because of the way that it felt, but if you have more dry skin, you'll probably definitely enjoy this one much more than I did. Okay, next is the Nivea UV Super Water Gel. This is an SPF 50, it is an Asian sunscreen, and it is going in five stars because I'm a big fan of this one. The only con that I have to say is that if you wear it on its own and you lean more dry, you're gonna feel dry. Like I felt like it wasn't moisturizing around my mouth, which is where I lean dry when I wasn't wearing any products underneath, but the rest of my face was fine. But if I put a light moisturizer on um, in the summer, a nice light, not too shiny moisturizer, and then I put this uh, sunscreen on top it looks really good and then in the winter I actually wore it quite a bit where I would wear like a heavier moisturizer on and then I put this really light sunscreen on top and I enjoyed it that way so I really like the finish but I do think you need a little bit of something something underneath it I love this one to wear underneath makeup I love this one to wear on top of makeup if you use a beauty blender and you want to reapply over makeup this one actually works really well for that um, and it just it looks good and it felt good and this was one that I actually wanted to reapply so that tells me that's a good sunscreen if I actually want to wear it and then I should say my other con is that it does burn my eyes a little bit but I just skip my eye area when I'm wearing this one and put a different product on there but that is sort of a con but I would still give it five stars because I have worn it I would repurchase it and I would recommend it to people next is the cynic enjoy super mild sun essence this is an SPF 50 plus this one does have niacinamide in it, uh, centella asiatica, hyaluronic acid, pentanol, green tea, adenosine, so lots of nice soothing ingredients in there, um, but it does have the niacinamide, which I feel like some people don't necessarily like. I personally love when a sunscreen has niacinamide. I notice that I get less shiny with it. I'm gonna give this one four stars. I liked the way that it felt on my skin without a moisturizer. I feel like it was moisturizing enough. Um, definitely could wear it on its own. Um, loved the, it's, it kind of gives like a natural finish that's not shiny. It's super lightweight, it spreads really easily. My, the reason I'm giving it a four star instead of a five stars is because there was an ever so slight white cast. So if you have a deeper complexion than myself, I feel like you're gonna see it a bit more. Um, but I did like the feel of it. So we're gonna give it four stars and it didn't cause me any irritation sensitivities or anything like that, just a decent sunscreen. The next one is the Cynic Enjoy All Around Airy Sun Stick. This one is an SPF 50 plus, PA of four plus. I'm gonna give this one three stars. I found that I liked it on bare skin with the first layer, but then the more layers you put of the sunscreen stick, the greasier it gets. Also, it does have that sort of silicone feel to it, and if you don't like that, you're not gonna like this one. Personally, I don't mind the silicone feel, but this one did start to feel a little bit slick throughout the day. This one also did kind of clog my pores. It didn't really cause me breakouts, but I just felt like throughout the day, it felt, it started to feel a little bit heavy throughout the day. Yeah, I didn't love it, but I guess I would recommend it to people with more dry skin if you're looking for a sun stick. So we're gonna give it three stars. Also, I wouldn't recommend wearing this one on top of makeup because it does kind of shift your makeup every time you swiped it. So I wouldn't recommend it for that. 
Um, the finish of it is definitely a little bit more natural to dewy finish um, by the end of the day. So if you're not looking for that, definitely don't reapply on top of makeup. Ooh, we have another five star sunscreen. This, I think this is my overall favorite sunscreen this year. I think I can say that pretty confidently. The Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sun Stick SPF 50 plus. It's a Korean sunscreen and it's a sun stick, like I said. Loved the sunscreen. Overall, great sunscreen to wear underneath makeup. I feel like with the stick formula, it's very easy to apply on the go. There's no white cast on this one. It wears well with makeup. It wears well on top of makeup as well. And the finish of it is sort of semi-matte to natural. It looks semi-matte when you first put it on, but then I think it settles into a natural finish throughout the day and it doesn't ir my, irritate my eyes. So if I wanna quickly reapply sunscreen on my eyes with a stick, this is one that I will reach for. My only con is that it does leave a slight residue on your face. Like when you wear it and you touch your face a bit later, you could feel a little bit of the sunscreen on there, um, which is sort of like a silicone feeling. So if you don't like that and it bothers you, then I wouldn't recommend this one. But I actually thought that I would that would bother me more in the summer months, but I actually wore it and it wasn't a big deal for me. So I, yeah, I really like the sunscreen. I give it five stars. I would repurchase it. I would recommend it to people. And then I tried the Be Plain Clean Ocean Non Nano Mild Sunscreen. This one I was not a big fan of. This is a, this one I got really cheap. It was $6 on Stalvana, but I just didn't like the feel of it. I felt like it left a cast and the cast leaned more towards purple rather than white. I did like though that it maintained the natural finish throughout the day. So even coming out two hours later, my skin looked the same as it looked 15 minutes after I put it on, which is great, especially if you have oily skin and you get more oily in your T-zones or more greasy. Um, this is one that can hold up throughout the day and keep you keep your oils more controlled. I'm gonna put it in the one star category because I just, I don't know, I wasn't a huge fan and I just, I haven't reached for it and I haven't recommended it. So we're gonna stick it there. The Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Milk. This one is an SPF 50 plus, PA of four plus. It is an Asian sunscreen. It is kind of a combo. It has zinc oxide in it, but it also has Uvenol A plus and octanoxate. It's water resistant for 40 minutes. I'm gonna give this one four stars because I felt like if you wore it with a moisturizer, anybody across the board, different skin types, if you wear it with a moisturizer and you put it on top, it looks pretty good. But on its own, it was a little bit not moisturizing enough. Also, there was a very, very slight cast, nothing extreme. So this is one that I would reach for more in the winter when I put a moisturizer on and then put this on top. But in the summer, uh, I guess, if you wear like a really, really light moisturizer, but I personally haven't been reaching for this one this summer as much. So um, yeah, let's give it four stars because I would recommend it to people, but I'd give them sort of those caveats where it's not like a simple, it's a, it wears well when you wear it this specific way. <laughs> All right, we're getting to the end. We have three more. The Eucerin Sun Oil Control SPF 50 Face Sunscreen Lotion. This is a chemical sunscreen. So this Eucerin sunscreen, I'm actually gonna put in the one star because it was kind of garbage in my opinion. Um, first of all, it caused me irritation. I was itching my face throughout the day. That did not feel comfortable. It caused me to break out. I was getting lots of breakouts with this one and then the moment that I stopped, my breakouts kind of settled in a little bit more. Um, it was, it says on the packaging that it's oil controlling. I didn't find it oil controlling at all. I actually found that it was, it got a little bit greasy with reapplication and just throughout the day. So I have not gone back to using it. I would not recommend it to people. So for all those reasons, we're gonna say that it's just one star. And then after that, I tried the La Roche-Posay Anthelios UV Correct Face Sunscreen SPF 70 with niacinamide. This one was kind of similar to the Eucerin one. Um, I'm gonna say that this is slightly better though. I'm not gonna give it a one star. I'm gonna give it a two star because I liked it more than the Eucerin one. I found that it was definitely dewy. It was giving a dewy finish and it did get a little bit shiny and greasy throughout the day. Um, I personally did end up having some breakouts from it and some irritation. It wasn't like itching, but just irritation in general. 
and it it didn't really feel that good in the summer. I might have liked it better in the winter, which is why I'm giving it two stars because I feel like if you lean more dry and you don't have sensitivities or irritations that I have, you might like it a bit more just as a quick day-to-day -day sunscreen. But for me, I didn't really like it. Would I recommend it to people? I guess if you have really dry skin, I would recommend it to you maybe, but it was still even a little bit too heavy and greasy even for my skin. So I don't know, it might be too heavy and greasy for dry skin people too, but it wasn't terrible. So I'm not gonna give it one star. I'm gonna give it a two star. And then the last slash most recent sunscreen we've tried this year is the Cots Flawless Complexion Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. They released their sunscreen in a deeper shade, so richly tinted. And I loved the tint of this. I found that the tint was like perfect for my skin. It pretty much disappeared. It looked really good. It wasn't leaving a white cast. So again, with these mineral sunscreens, you just kind of have to find the perfect tint to match you, otherwise it's terrible. Now, if you're not my exact shade, I don't know if you would like it, right? You might still feel like it looks crazy on you. So I'm gonna give this one a four star because it's not one that I'm gonna use all year round. In the summer, if you're actually outside in the heat, it's a bit much. It's a heavier sunscreen, right? It's a more glowy, moisturizing sunscreen. So if you live in a humid climate, you're not gonna like it. But I have reached for the Cots sunscreen more in the winter in the past. Um, because my skin leans a little bit more dry in those months. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a four star instead of a five because I can't wear it all year round. And I would recommend it to people, but I would say, you know, if it's not a perfect match, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna look right. So it's kind of iffy with that. This one doesn't cause me any breakouts or sensitivities or irritation. Um, and yeah, it just looked good. I was very impressed. This is probably one of the best looking mineral sunscreens that I've ever tried. And that is simply because the tint was just perfect for me. So we're gonna give it four stars for me, but I don't think everyone will like it, especially because it's a little bit heavier and because you have to find the right tint for it. So four stars. I'm sorry if I've sounded so nasally in this video, I'm sick. Well, I'm not sick, I have allergies and they are kicking my butt. So if I sound a little bit froggy throughout, that's why. I believe those are all the sunscreens we've tried in the last year. If you have tried some of these and you agree with my ranking, let us know down in the comment section below. If you've tried some of these and you're like, girl, why are you giving that five stars? It should be a two star. Or why are you giving it one star? It should be a five star. Let us know down below. Um, also, make sure you leave your sunscreen recommendations down below. As you know, if you've been on this channel, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a step back from doing weekly sunscreen reviews. so. I'll probably review less sunscreens in the next year, but still leave your recommendations down below. We'll get to them eventually. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.